Hello, what's up? I'm Dimitris and it's the 17th of July 2019. I'm in Corinthia at my holiday home. It's a beautiful evening, let me show you. Unfortunately, this mountain was burnt in a forest fire two years ago. I don't know how long it will take to recover, but it used to be, the whole mountain used to be greener, anyway. Um, I've never really done a video like this before. I haven't shared an experience like this with people and I didn't know in which form would be, it would be better to make it in. But uh, let's try it out and see how it goes. So I wanted to share with you my experience with um, doing a 30 day... My experience with uh, abstaining from uh, any kind of um, substance or drug or anything like this for 30 days. So no alcohol, no tobacco, no caffeine and no alcohol, no tobacco, no caffeine, no weed, nothing for 30 days. So it was the first challenge in a series of challenges called 30 Challenges to Enlightenment. It's um, uh, like an obstacle course designed by a website called High Existence where you can um, you can start this challenge of this challenge of challenges and um, do one challenge every month for 30 months supposedly which you can do more than one challenge per month of course if you want i combined my first month i did two challenges the first one was the one i told you about um, the no alcohol no caffeine no drugs and the other one was walking 30 minutes per day I already do this, I've, I've been doing this for years, I would say. I, I walk around a lot, I also run a lot, so it wasn't really a challenge for me. But uh, I digress, I wanted to tell you that um, this obstacle course, let's say, uh, is designed to make you do things you would never do otherwise. So. Um, it doesn't promise you enlightenment uh, as a fixed recipe. It just um, brings you out of your comfort zone. It, um, some of the challenges are really scary. Like uh, one of the last challenges is meditating two hours every day for a whole month. Or telling the truth, being radically honest for a whole month. Um, doing alternate day fasting for a whole month or abstaining from social media for a whole month abstaining from sex for a whole month and doing all sorts of things like that and the first one was uh, was like for many years i thought even though i was interested in this challenge in the 30 day in the 30 yeah in the 30 challenges to enlightenment course the first one seemed like such a such a big one no, uh, the, the caffeine, no caffeine for 30 days sounded the uh, most difficult, honestly. Um, but this was the price of entry, you know? In things like that, there's a, there's a price to pay in order to, in order to be, in order to join in the price of entry for, to accept the teaching, let's say, to you have to sacrifice something in order to accept the, the lesson in your life. This is the reason why sometimes uh, the things we pay nothing for are the things we value less or the least, I suppose. Well, um, so what I want to tell you is that um, a lot of people <laughs> thought uh, I was crazy. I did it with my girlfriend, Marilena, this challenge. And um, surprisingly for her, it was the, the most difficult part was uh, cutting out tobacco and cigarettes 
for me it was, uh, I guess the, the toughest part was caffeine, as I expected from the beginning. Caffeine, coffee, okay, I, I kept drinking uh, decaffeinated uh, coffees, but um, really it wasn't as hard as I thought. It wasn't as hard as I thought, it was more like um, I was scared I would get caffeine withdrawal, uh, I would get the caffeine withdrawal syndrome. And I did for a couple of days, um, at the beginning, the first two or three days, I would say the first two days I was really grumpy, really like um, you didn't want to talk with me, no, not at all. Um, really grumpy, really stressed, uh, really antsy. It wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't so. F it wasn't as physical as I as I feared it would be. I didn't get any headaches, which was quite surprising for me. I didn't get any. I didn't get any other physical effects. It was just. Um, Sorry, I'm, my hand is tired, my arm is tired. Um, it was psychological, it was um, cutting out an important part of my daily life. Of, of my, it was cutting out a habit. Um, I'm 30 years old now and I think I've been drinking coffee, more, I had been drinking coffee more or less every day uh, since my, I would say, my teens, my, when, since I was 16 or 17 years old, and that's a lot of years. Um, but it was surprisingly easy to kick this habit. Of course, I did miss coffee, and I did miss this, uh, the kick and the psychological boost and uh, the stimulation caffeine brings. And one of the reasons I would really recommend doing this challenge was drinking coffee as if it was uh, the first time again. Like uh, the first coffee I drank after these 30 days uh, of uh, not drinking anything caffeinated or okay I should say that I didn't I did drink uh, some cokes sometimes or I did eat some chocolate or okay the de decaffeinated coffee does have some uh, some small amounts of caffeine really small amounts and I did drink some green tea during my 72 hour fast but that's a different thing I did so you could say I didn't really not drink any coffee or caffeine during uh, these days but still I feel as if not drinking uh, coffee proper counts really counts for me it's it's a really it's really a change of habit um, so yeah what I wanted to say to go back to what I was saying is that really the first coffee after these 30 days was just like um, getting an injection of uh, cocaine okay like okay I know you don't <laughs> inject cocaine usually but you sniff cocaine but imagine really um, it was I, I, I felt the caffeine in my body and in my brain <laughs> Like, uh, I really felt it in my blood that, yeah, this is a drug. It's an actual drug that everyone's so hooked up on. They, they never realize that they're addicted and they don't realize that they're past this point, you know, where you just uh, intake this drug, not to get the high, just to be normal. And uh, everyone's way past the point of diminishing returns. We just drink coffee every day just to be normal, not to be, not uh, even, you know, everyone says, 
I need coffee to wake up. As if, if you don't drink coffee, you're not gonna wake up. This is not true. People who don't drink coffee wake up just fine. The problem is <laughs> that um, everyone's hooked on, on caffeine, so they need to start their day by drinking coffee. If they don't, they feel like shit. And uh, that's true for me as well, and it was true. But I, I managed. So that's for coffee. I really recommend trying this challenge just to see what it means to drink, to remember, to feel like, like it's for the first time, to feel uh, that you're drinking coffee for the first time. And, and to feel it in your blood, what it is to not be addicted to coffee. Uh, alcohol, for me, I missed alcohol when I was socializing with people. Everybody drinking beer, wine, and me just drinking, I don't know, some juice or lemonade. Um, I, this is alcohol. I didn't, I didn't miss alcohol so much, the, the buzz. And if you're, if you're outside uh, the alcohol scene, suddenly it, it's really strange to see how people need alcohol to socialize. It's jarring to see people... To a certain extent you see it also with uh, coffee. People addicted, uh, addicts. Everyone around you is an addict in some sort. The whole uh, society is, um, is officially addicted to these two substances. But I would say that... Um, Alcohol addiction is is a very sneaky little thing. It's uh, I went with a, I went to a wedding with Marilena, and uh, you know that's where you see that a wedding is much less fun without alcohol, and uh, we felt kind of um, left out, left out of the fun. But um, I don't know. You really get, uh, you really see that uh, without alcohol, people can't have fun. Almost, it's uh, it's so ingrained into our society, and going out and uh, all that. If you're sober and you go around, walk around at night in Athens or wherever in every big city, and you see people going out drinking beers or other drinks you suddenly feel as if you're out of the matrix <laughs> and you're looking in and thinking, what's going on? Don't these people see that they're actually using a drug just to have fun? Uh, it's, it's like an institutional drug, alcohol. So widely accepted. And I would recommend doing this challenge just to see, just to see uh, through first-hand experience this uh, sort of um, to get this taste <laughs> of being outside the matrix ah my hand again sorry hand arm i keep mixing these two words up because in greek they're both sherry ah <laughs> so mm. tobacco I didn't really miss tobacco. I don't really smoke. Just when I drink, <laughs> when I drink a lot, I usually smoke. But since I wasn't drinking at all, I didn't want to smoke either. So, yeah, that was good. Marilena had... Uh, Marilena missed smoking a lot. But when she smoked her first cigarette, she immediately regressed it. Like, um, I don't know. If you haven't smoked for one month, that's when you really get that cigarette smoke sucks. It smells really bad. It's... Um, why are we even doing this to ourselves? No idea. Um, I don't know, 
I'm not even sure if this uh, recording is gonna be uh, interesting to watch or if my bobbing if uh, the bobbing of the camera even though my camera does have image st stabilization I don't know if the audio quality is gonna be good enough or um, yeah because now I'm on the um, main road the, the road that goes to Epidavros with um, the famous ancient theater so I made it to the seashore it was like a hundred meters from where I was shooting last I would just like to encourage everyone to try giving up the things they are used to and seeing what uh, comes up for them I mean don't they say that they say things like if you give up someone you love if they leave they were never yours or something like that at least in Greek we have this saying I guess it's I guess we're not so original in this sense in easy Greek the YouTube series I do where I teach Greek basically in one of uh, my latest episodes which was about freedom one of the people who was uh, one of the people who participated said we only realize what freedom is when we lose it and this is something I would really like to to dwell on because um, it also applies to so many things like you only know how much cafe what caffeine means to you when you give it up or you really you really deeply realize what alcohol means to you when you give it up for weeks when you allow yourself to see what it feels like to be without this to be without this um, substance now I don't know if this challenge is for everyone I would say that um, everyone could benefit from challenging themselves but don't don't misinterpret me telling you about my experience as as me telling you that you should do it um, you know what you should do you know what you should do for yourself I'm just here carrying the message I am the message bearer if you like it worked for me it wasn't as challenging as I feared it was um, it was actually pretty 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 painless if you disregard the social kind of it was it was actually a um, discussion topic um, I could always uh, tell people hey you know what I'm doing a 30 day um, abstention from all kinds of drugs all kinds of drugs that people don't really consider as drugs <laughs> and uh, it was interesting to see people's reactions why are you doing this and why are you why are you why are you being different why and some people thought I was trying to be better than them that I was too good for alcohol I was too good for no it's not I like drinking. I, I even have a beer now. Cheers. I'm not trying to advertise Amstel. I'm not a big fan of it. It's just... Anyway, now... <laughs> I don't believe altering your consciousness with uh, um, using drugs uh, or substances, alcohol, tobacco, caffeine and illegal substances is a wrong thing um, it depends on each person individually what they can do with the, this experience and um, and if they're prone to addiction we're all addicts in a sense we just don't realize it 
and an experience like this just brings this fact in front of our eyes. You cannot escape that you're an addict when you are in when you're on your second or third day without coffee and you're you have uh, your worst withdrawal of your life. But as I told you before, it's it's worth it. It's worth giving up drugs just to see how this makes you feel so yeah give it a go regarding the 30 challenges to enlightenment I mentioned before I'm actually now on my third challenge which is uh, meditating every day 20 minutes every day of meditation and I feel this is a bigger challenge for me personally than abstaining from substances and especially now that um, I can freely indulge in caffeine and alcohol and everything else even though I'm not doing in doing anything else no no sir um, meditation can be a bit... it, it requires uh, presence of mind and it um, cultivates presence of mind. So I hope that by... by dedicating 20 minutes every day to this practice I can actually make it a habit. I've tried many times to make uh, a habit of meditation and I just can't... I haven't been able to do it until now. Um, I, I know that I'm resisting this. I'm resisting putting down 20 minutes each day, 20 minutes of doing nothing. I'm resisting this, so I know I have to give it my all. And this is my third day of uh, this challenge, and I hope that by the end I'll be more um, centered, more aware, and m less prone to mosquitoes. <laughs> Not the not less prone to mosquitoes, although that would be a good thing, but less prone to... My big addiction is actually the internet and uh, the infinite novelty that internet brings with it. I'm, um, this, I'm very susceptible to this and I, ho what, I, I hope I can really um, be more mindful in my work and everyday life and um, I can give up some some compulsive behaviors like uh, visiting the same websites mindlessly like Reddit or TV Access or um, Facebook of course when I don't really want to like um, I want to be more creative in my life and this is what I want meditation to bring me. This is what I want being centered to bring me and give me. And this is what I want these 30 challenges to enlightenment to bring me. Let's see. So before I close off, I'd like to show you what's behind me. You already see, of course, what's behind me, but let me give you a tour. This is the Ayi Theodori oil refinery, which is right across the sea. Um, yeah, well, it refines oil, but it's in the distance. I don't know how many kilometers from here it is. Less than 10, a straight line, obviously. Um, but doesn't pollute the sea too much, fortunately. There's still life, marine life around me and in the sea of uh, Lutra. 
Lutra Orea Selenis is uh, the area where my holiday home is. And behind this hill, in the distance, like somewhere around there, the mountain in the distance is called, um, is the mountain just above uh, the town of Lutraki. And somewhere between here and there is the um, the Corinth Canal, which was dug in uh, late 19th century. Actually, the ancient Greeks wanted to dig it to create this canal that would connect the Corinthian and the Saronic Gulfs, but it would take more than 2,000 years for people to actually have the means to do it. So, yeah, it's, it's a highlight when visiting the Peloponnese, where we are now. I hope, actually, that um, I have inspired you in uh, trying out uh, some personal challenges. Maybe I'll see you soon in another video where I share my experience about this um, 30 challenges to enlightenment. So, see you soon.